Yo, what's good? It's a very special episode of The Wonderkind Show. And today's late night topic is Blue Lock. <laughs> yes, an anime about soccer. Listen, soccer's a sport. I'm covering sports-related topics. And guess what? Any way you want to look at it, that's sports-related topics. <laughs> so check this out, right? This is pretty much Squid Games meets soccer. That's exactly what it is. It's Squid Games meet soccer. And they're not playing in this at all. So the pretty much the first episode, because the next episode comes tomorrow, right? But the first episode starts with the main character called Asagi um, in, a, in, his, in a championship game pretty much. Now, if they win this game, I believe they go to nationals, right? So he got the ball. He's dribbling down the field. He's, ha, ah, ah, ha, ah, ha. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. And you know he's the protagonist, right? Because his eyes start turning blue. So I'm like, oh, yeah, he about to go Super Saiyan on them balls. Pause. <laughs> but anyways, he does. He's going down there. He's giving it. And then he hears his coach scream one, uh, all for one, one for all, meaning pass the ball because in his peripheral vision, he could see to his right, he could see his teammate. Now, it's him one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. But if he passes it, it's a wide-open shot for his teammate. Now, look. This is the funny thing about team sports. Because he makes the team play. He makes the play that when you watch all of these goody two-shoe shows like Rudy, you know, <laughs> oh, it's team over over individual, you know what I mean? Like, that's the real world. You know, he does that. And he passes it over to his teammate who gets a wide-open shot, and the man hits it off the right goal. Jesus Christ! Yo, the bullet! <laughs> And he's like, and then the ball hit so hard that it went to the other team, and they just kicked it over because they're all the other team was already up one zero, right? But they would have tied it, so you already know, you know what I'm saying? Sudden death rules and other things coming to play, but that didn't happen. They got back the ball, scored on their goalie real quick, won the game, two zero. And the fun, and the worst part is, or the funny part is, he's just looking at it like, bro, I could have made that shot. And, you know, it goes to his coach. <laughs> ah, yo, his coach is pretty much like, one day you're going to wake up and this whole thing would have been a waste of time. <laughs> tears, 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 tears. And he's the only one like, are you serious? <laughs> And then the stupid teammate that missed the easiest goal of his career says, oh, we'd be in national only if I could have made that shot. Anybody could have made that shot. <laughs> Yo, he should have put the Kobe Bryant and said, I'm taking this myself. But once again, that's, see that right there, that mindset, what I'm saying, that ego, that's what the premise of this show is about. You see, they're going to tell you, oh, it's about, you know, finding the best striker. No, it's about make or or making a player that garners the ego that's needed to be the best of all time at the striker position, which is usually the forward position. So, you know, fast forward, you know, he's riding home. He stops. He starts to cry. I'm like, bro, this man's heartbroken. Gets home, you know, he gets this letter. He about to sit down with dinner with his with his with his mother and father. He gets this letter like, yo, you've been invited to the Japan, you know, world organization. You feel me? It's like, what? Soccer organization. So he goes there. You know what I'm saying? He's like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna see what it's about. They go there, then this eccentric dude with some big old eyes come on the stage, and he's just like acting all like Seto Kaiba style. <laughs> I will make the best striker ever. That's what this is about. 300 of you. And it's li that's where the squid games come in, right? Because there's 300 soccer players, all the same position, the forward position, the striker, right? And he got 300 of them that's ranked. 
So 1 to 300, that's your rank. In his eyes, that's what your rank. So this dude, you know, he's telling them all, it's all about ego. All the best have that ego. And that's the biggest problem with Japan's world uh, World Cup chances, the World Cup team, they're too team oriented. They don't, they don't make the the me plays that's needed to win at that level. They're oh, we're still gonna be a lovable team, and that dictates their lack of success. So, pretty much, this guy, they're all listening to this, three hundred of them, and this is like the top high school players in the country, and. <laughs> They're all looking at this guy like he's crazy because he's pretty much saying you're going to have to give up everything to be here and only one of you will be chosen. And, you know, pretty much they're like, nah, that's kind of whack. You feel me? I got a team that's going to nationals. I got to go support my team. He said, that's the problem with y'all. I'm telling you, I'm going to make you the best striker of all time and you will win the World Cup and you would think more about your high school team than those aspirations. And that's where everything pretty much kicks up at. That's where it, that's where the whole thing like kicks up, takes a whole nother step forward and starts looking at like, yo, all right, all right, yo, I'm about to do this because I want to be the best. So the main character, he runs, he's like, yo, I want to be the best, bro. Like I'm doing what I got to do. <laughs> we got to do something. <laughs> so he runs, then everyone follows, right? So then pretty much they're like, it's like letter, like alphabetical order, like A through Z. And the Z column, of course, has the lowest members. <laughs> the bottom 10 or whatever is in that room. And he's part of the 10. He's, he's ranked 299. <laughs> Y'all, they did this man dirty, bro. But that's the Squid Game, right? That's why I'm, it's the parallels between that and Squid Game. So I'm looking at it like, okay, okay, okay. Uh, this is where, you know, if Squid Game, soccer makes sense. Whatever. And he told everybody to change. They change. They're looking at each other thinking like, oh, well, these are going to be my roommates. You, you know, I might as well, you know, uh, tell them who I am, you know, acquaint myself with them. And then he comes on the screen and says, hey, yo, we're playing tag with a ball. If you get hit with it, you're it. Last person leaves. You're done. You won't be in this no more. And just turns off the screen. And everyone's like, huh? Hey! So the la <laughs> So the lowest person whose parents are like monks and they have a temple. And if he doesn't succeed at this, he's gonna be a monk. Like, cause you know, their stature at like in in, in Japan and stuff like that, a lot of times. Family businesses are inherited. So when you're a certain age and stuff like that, that's what you're going to do. Unless you're, you head above excel at something else, you're doing and garnering the family business. That's just how it goes. There's no running from it. So he's like, hey, yo, I'm do anything to win. So he gets that ball and he starts trying to kick everybody, you feel me? And he gets one person, right? <laughs> he gets one person. Ah, which was, you know, held by another guy. Because the other guy has the mindset of what you need to have as a squid game person. They said the only thing you can't do with these balls, pause, is juggle them with your hands. <laughs> you, can't, you can't play with the balls with your hands. <laughs> you feel me? So he's like, yo, so anything to touch the other person so I can hold you, I can trip you, I can do whatever I need to do as long as that ball to get you to hit. I can hold you so that person can hit you. It's no holds bar, right? So he holds one of the players and the guy gets kicked. And he's a bigger guy. So he gets mad and wants to kick the other guy back. And when he hits it, the, 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 the last person jump, jumps on the protagonist's back. It says, ah, it's a pull, ah, it's a pull. The pulling his mouth and everything is pretty much like, yo, you're going to be out. So the ball hits him. I mean, full kill in his stomach. He's like, Bleh. Like, that's the sound he's making. And <laughs> it's only like a minute to go. So remember, if you were the last person hit, you're it. And that means you have to leave immediately. Immediately. So he's like, yo, I got to do what I need to do to win. I, I want to be the best. So... Pretty much, he goes loco, and he's trying to, you know, get these people out. 
the last the the guy who's ranked 300 trips pretty much he's gonna be able to kick in but you know how anime protagonists are they they, they get like sudden epiphanies that change or alter their course so he had a course like, yo, why am I trying to get him out? I got to get the best out. I got to try to get the best because if I if I can't beat the best, I'll be a nobody. So instead of getting the easy guy out, which is the last person because he had tripped and fell, he turns around and tries to get somebody else. And <laughs> ah, yo, he gets the person out, right? But <laughs> this one crazy dude, I'm actually going to look up his, his, his name real quick. It's a crazy dude in the group that's like real eccentric, bruh. And this dude is the reason why, oh yeah, his name is uh, Bachira or Bakara, right? Bakara. That's all I'm going to say. It. It's either Bachira or Bakara, but I'm going to say Bakara, right? Bakara pretty much uh, kicks the ball back to him. Because he takes the ball because he wants to get one of the bigger guys out, one of the number one guys out. And he looks like he's vicious, like he's vicious and everything. And um, he kicks the ball to him. And then when the ball misses and goes back to the main character, he delivers the winning shot to the man's face. Blam! I mean, I mean, kicks him dead square in his dome. And you can see the blood from his nose, the whole nine. Uh, Nahuraha, that's who got hit with the ball. So now the, the episode ends with him getting hit and him pretty much saying, I'll do what it takes to be the best. Now look, this was the first episode. How many stars would I give this show? For the first, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Um, it was, it was like I said before, action pack. I just... <laughs> I would have got the easiest person out, bro. Like, he was doing too much, being too extra, but whatever. He did what he had to do. He got, I mean, he stayed into the squid game for soccer. You feel me? SGS. SGS. Squid game soccer. <laughs> but, bro, I'm not going to lie. Um, um, the next episode comes out tomorrow, and I will be watching it. Now, look. Now, look. <laughs> soccer or football, as it's called and stuff over there and other places, is the world's biggest sport. And I know a lot of y'all don't watch it like that, but that's fine. I do. <laughs> and, yo, they brought up some of the greats. They brought up Messi. They brought up Rodono. They brought up uh, Pele. They brought, they brought up a lot of great players at the beginning when saying that these, these players have egos. And that's what it takes to compete at that level of excellence to be the greatest you have to have some type of ego and the funny thing is i'm more of a basketball football guy when i'm talking about sports if you go and look at those sports all of the greatest of all time have some type of ego all of them all of them especially basketball when you look at michael jordan magic johnson larry bird kareem abdul-jabbar lebron james all of them, they have very, very large egos. Very large. Because you have to sometimes be selfish to get to those levels. You do. If anybody tells you different, they're lying. They're lying. At that level of competition where you're, where this is, because you have to understand. When you're talking about the World Cup, when you're talking about, you know, these players that make it to soccer leagues, NBA, NFL, they are already the cream of the crop of, like, their respectives before. So, like, colleges and other things. Those players already are the cream of the crop. Now, out of those players, they're going to rise. The cream of that crop is going to rise to another level. And those are usually, like, the all-stars. Those are, like, the, the starters. You, oh, I'm sorry. Those are more of the starters, right? And then the cream from that crop will rise again. From the starters will come the all-stars. And then the cream will rise from that crop. And from the all-stars will come the superstars. And then from that crop, you get the number one player in the world. And that's how it's worked out of every league. No matter what league you win, that's how it works. The cream will just continually rise to the top. And this... And this show, 
this anime is pretty much saying that if you are all about team and you do not have a healthy amount of ego, you will not succeed. And I agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Do you really think people are going to look at your high school team like, oh my God, this was so great. He gave up those points so that the players around him could be good. Or are they going to look at you when you were the star player of that team making it to a great college? And henceforth, as henceforth, and henceforth. Because it continues, just like that. The stars continually just keep moving up. While the rest are left behind. That's the true nature of competition. And that's what this, that's the premise of the show. That's literally the premise of the show. I'm loving it. I'm liking it so far. I'm going to watch tomorrow. Tomorrow the episode comes on Saturday. And as soon as that episode is done, I'll be making another video for episode two. But look, I took up enough of your time. I took up enough of your time. Shout outs to the show, Blue Lock. I'm liking it. And shout outs to y'all if y'all if y'all tuning in. Remember, like and subscribe. We're going to be doing this. You know what I'm saying? Anything sports related. And this is Nitro coming with you at another episode of The Wonderkin Show. And y'all knows my slogan. If you don't know it, and this is your first time watching me, you're going to learn my slogan. And my slogan goes something like this. Peace. And I'm out. Yep. Yeah. <laughs>